Welcome back to the Z-Access YouTube channel, where we talk about current and trending accessibility issues that I think need to be covered more. Today, we are talking about the Sensor Push app, which is used to read humidity and temperature sensor data from Bluetooth Sensor Push sensors. This is going to be a two-part video. In the first part, we will go through two screens of the Sensor Push app, and one screen is very inaccessible, as you'll see. In the second part of the video, we will go over some ways to make the second screen, which is a graph of humidity data, more accessible through sonification. I use the Sensor Push sensors to monitor humidity and temperature of guitars. I have two sensors set up in two different guitars, and I use this application to monitor their relative humidity because that's important for keeping guitars in good condition. So we'll start by going through this first screen so you can kind of see uh, what it sounds like with voiceover. Um, settings button. There's a settings button. Settings button. We're not going to talk about the settings today. Uh, the next element on the screen devices heading. is a heading that's devices. Um, and I've got two devices set up, so next it's going to report the current conditions of each device. Add device button. Oh, just kidding. It's going to be the add device button. Current conditions heading. Here's the current conditions. So, last reading, 401 p.m. temperature, 61.9 degrees Fahrenheit, relative humidity, 46.3%, rising greater than daily ABC, 61 degrees Fahrenheit, last 45% steady. So we got a lot of information there. Relative humidity is 46%, which is what I care about. Um, and that sensor's name is Joe, because it's a Joe Pass Emperor 2 Pro guitar. Um, and uh, the important thing is that the humidity is 46%, so that's good. Um, humidity level for a guitar. The next one. Taylor, last reading, 4.03 p.m. Temperature, 65.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Relative humidity, 44.2%. Rising greater than daily ABC, 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Last 42%. Rising greater than is the Taylor, which is uh, also a good humidity level. It also reports the temperature. It reports the daily average, and it reports if it's rising or not. So that's all great on the surface, and the app is great for testing for uh, verifying current conditions of the sensors in the guitars, uh, which is all well and good because that's what I got it for. Uh, but if we go into this next screen, I will double tap the Taylor guitar here. Select power button, one of five. We get a screen, um, and if you are a visual sighted person watching this video, uh, there are two graphs on this screen that we will get to and we'll see if they're accessible. I bet you can predict that they won't be. Um, Maybe you're not as cynical as me, and maybe you didn't predict that, but anyway. Configure button, Taylor heading. This screen Devices back button. has a back button, as many of these screens do. It has Taylor heading. the name of the sensor, which is Taylor, um, and it has configure button. a configure button, which is where you can go to set um, things like the notifications if it goes too low in the humidity range or too high, or if the temperature gets too high, you can be notified. Select power button one and of then mine. it has these buttons that uh, determine which graph is displayed here. So we've got hour, DIY button two of five, day. Not sure why it spells it, but it's day. Week button three of five. And we have week, month button four of five, and month year button five of five. And here, so right now it said that the hour graph is selected. So this is um, the graph of the humidity and temperature of this sensor over a 24-hour period. March at 3:04 p.m. So we got an announcement of probably what I'm assuming is a label on the graph. March 10th at 4.04 p.m. And March 10th at 4.04 p.m. Bullet operator model H21, bullet operator 694 sample save, bullet operator last seen March 10th, 2022, 4.05 p.m. 32 seconds ago, bullet operator last seen strength, black medium square, black medium square, white medium square, white medium square, A1 TV, bullet operator battery voltage 3.0, yeah, 60.5 degrees Fahrenheit, bullet operator device ID 394,527. Then we get a lot of information about the battery and the sensors and when it was last seen, but nothing about the graph and what the curve looks like, which might be important if you're gonna um, decide if your humidifier needs more water, for instance. Export data as CSV button. So we have a handy export data as CSV button, which we're gonna talk about in the next part of this video. But I repeat, the two graphs in this video are not accessible. Export data as CSV button. We have now explored every screen element on the screen, and there was nothing reported about the curve of the graph. Um, if I take my finger and explore, which is often a good way to um, tackle these inaccessible apps, nothing bullet operator model H21 bullet operator 600. until I hit the text. But I can actually feel with my finger that there's a whole big area of the screen that isn't being read out. So 
What we will do in the second part of this video is take advantage of the fact that we can export this as a CSV file, and we will look at some sonification techniques to listen to this data. Okay, so for part two of this video, here we are in Windows, um, and we've opened the CSV file that I saved, and we're viewing it in Notepad. Uh, we're using the latest version of NVDA and Windows 10, although this process would also work on Linux, I believe, and my plan is to automate this process a little bit more. Um, so I could have opened this in Excel, but I opened it in Notepad because what I'm really gonna do is take this into R, because I'm a math person at heart still, uh, and we're gonna try and, and view this data. So first of all, we'll look at the header of this CSV file. Uh, these are the columns that would be displayed in Excel if we opened this in Excel. Timestamp for sample frequency every one minute temperature degrees F relative humidity percent. So we've got three columns, the timestamp, uh, which is every minute, so over basically a 24 hour period, temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and relative humidity. So these columns are gonna be important when we pull this data into R. Um, so there's three of them. Second column is the temperature and the third column is the humidity. So uh, th those were the graphs in the previous, uh, a little while ago that were displayed uh, in the video. Those graphs are uh, the second column of this file and the third column of the file on the y-axis and time in one minute intervals on the x-axis. So. Uh, we could read kind of just so you can hear what this sounds like with NVDA. Read the first line here. 2022030917 colon 30 colon 00 comma 63.5011 comma 47.7109. So at that moment in time, it was 47% humidity. But as you could tell, reading this would take a really long time, especially because there's probably Blank. over a thousand records in this file just for a 24 hour period. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull this into R. R uh, and R is. No, our console. a statistical analysis data data analysis package. Um, Greater. This video isn't about how to use R. I will put the code that I write into the um, YouTube description. But what we're first going to do is we're going to type library sonify. And you have to install this sonify package first, which I'll uh, include in the description. Greater. Um, and NVDA. This isn't the most accessible program, but we can use it. Um, you have to use a screen review command to read the output. Citation on how to cite type demo help dot start. So I'm pressing numpad seven and nine to navigate by line type here. Q, greater library sonify loading required package two and R. I can tell that it uh, greater worked because it loaded another package. Now I'm going to type this command that reads this data in from a CSV file. Uh, loading required greater Taylor less read dot CSV file equals G Taylor dot CSV. Okay, and we can press enter. Greater an interesting accessibility issue with R is that um, you can't actually read, Taylor, let's read .csv file these commands. You should be able to arrow through here. Line feed, line, line space, 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 space. It should not be saying space right now. Um, it should be saying uh, what the file, what the letter that I'm on is, but Greater. can't have it all. Um, so what I suggest if you're a blind user of R for the time being is to write these commands out separately somewhere and then paste them into R. That's what I do right now. Well, except for, for this video. Load Required package okay, tune so we read in the CSV read file, and reader. we can tell that actually, if we just type the name of this variable, which is Taylor, um, it will greater hopefully 1327 2022 3 10 15 hours and 36 minutes spit out all the data um because this is a data frame in r we can get it to spit out specific columns so hopefully you can see where i'm going with this if we type taylor uh comma two in brackets sync it should spit out just column two greater 419 68.4432 68.4239 68.4432 68.4400 yes and it spits it out in a big giant list so um, this is column three is the humidity data. That's what I care about. So what we can do 500 with this Sonify package, 500, oh my gosh, it's about so many, 800, 1000. Okay. Um, <laughs> it spit out a lot of data and the NVDA review cursor can't keep up. So what we can do, um, because column three is humidity. If we type Sonify, Leverage. Taylor three, um, this is going to create an audio representation of this plot. What we would see if you plotted this. Um, so I'll show you what that sounds like. I'll play it again. Print dialogues. Whoops. <laughs> uh, okay. Taylor. It opened in Windows Media Player, but it control. didn't. Windows Media Player. Put the keyboard focus there. So I'll press play again. Suggestion.
Um, and you can do things like, you can do a lot with this data to make it sound different. Like you could set it so that if it goes below 45%, it adds white noise to the sound, which is very important for me. I will be doing that. Um, you can change how long the data plays. So I think it's default is 10 seconds, but you could change it to play for a minute and really drill into the data with your ears. Suggestions. Um, and you can do all kinds of other things too. So that's what the humidity sounds like. And I, I don't know the pitch for 45% yet, but I will learn and then I'll be able to tell uh, when and generally for how long it's dipped below 45%. Um, Arguably. Just for fun, we can also play the, um, the temperature data, which is column two. And you can do that by Sonify Taylor two in brackets and parentheses. And again, I will put this code in the uh, description box so you can type it in with your own CSV file. So that was interesting. Um, I I do believe I heard my heater going on and off over the night. I think Arguably. that was those two little uh, pulses at the beginning. Medium. Windows Media Play. Play it again, and then uh, I took it. I took that guitar down to the basement, and I put it in the basement um, during the day because I was worried about humidity. And that's what that drop near the end of the data was, because um, at like 10 in the morning, I put it in the basement, and so it dropped from 10 to 4 p.m. So I'll let you hear that again. So it really dropped when I took it downstairs. Um, so that's kind of uh, how sonification can work with R if you install Document Windows the right packages. I think that um, this is a great tool and a great way to visualize data. I used a tool in high school to take, um, when I was taking studying calculus, I used a tool called the Audio Graphing Calculator from View Plus. Uh, I don't know if it exists anymore, but that tool was the first uh, sonification tool that I was aware of. Um, Desmos might do a video on Desmos pretty soon also has some sonification stuff like this and I think it's a really powerful way to understand data I think that in an ideal world, apps that display graphs, like the Sensor Push app, could have a Sonify option for uh, another way to visualize the data. Um, so thank you for watching. That was my solution to the inaccessible graph in the Sensor Push applications to Sonify it again. Thank you for watching.